everybody, and welcome back. This is Amanda Moxley, and I want to welcome you to the Speak Your Way to Success series, where I've selected the best of the best to share with us their top success strategies to speak, to sell, and share their message on stage, video, live streams, emails, etc., podcasts, all these great ways that you can help impact people and share your message and make millions and impact millions, and if that's what you want to do. So I've got the best of the best, and today I have Amy Yamaha. Mata. And hi, Amy. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> I'll go ahead and introduce her. So Amy Yamada is an international business mentor for coaches and entrepreneurs and is known as the queen of connection. Currently, she is uh, mentoring coaches, trainers, and entrepreneurs to make a massive impact through their businesses while living their best lives every single day. With over 15 years of experience in the media and now as a well-connected entrepreneur, Amy continues to make media appearances on the red carpet it at upscale fundraising galas and fashionable events in Hollywood and Seattle. She's been interviewed on TV stations, radio stations, podcasts, summits, magazines, blogs, and she was on Oprah.com as one of the top contestants for Oprah's search for the next TV star. Woohoo! <laughs> You're awesome. Well, I want to know about um, the red carpet gala, like what brought you there? And yeah. So it's so funny because I, that, that's a great question. You know, it's, um, something that when I was working in the media, predominantly on the business side of things, I would always look at the honor personalities, whether they're on, in you know, on the air and radio or television. And, um, I remember going to these events and seeing these, these MCs, for example, right. These big fundraiser galas and stuff like that. And they had these red carpet, you know, photography areas. And I thought that looks like so much fun, you know? And I thought, However, I'm not a local celebrity, so who am I to think that I could ever do that? And I thought, well, wait a minute, I'm a great public speaker. I love connecting with people. Why not me, you know? And so this was when I was still working. Um, I live in the greater Seattle area and I was working for a local lifestyle publication. It's like an upscale lifestyle magazine that still exists. It's called 425 for the 425 area code for anyone who knows this area, the home of Microsoft and um, Expedia and some other really great high tech and fashionable areas. Anyway. And I just started telling people that I am now offering speaking services, right? I always love to teach my clients this, the power of I am, right? Like, mm -hmm. I think, you know, but I just started saying, you know what? I am now offering speaking services. So if you or someone you know is hosting a big event and you're looking for an MC, then I'd love to put my name in the hat to be considered. Yeah. And so I just started making some noise and telling people and telling people and telling people, which is something I still use to this day in business. And I teach my clients this, I am now offering this. I am this, I am a speaker, just own it, stand in the power and see what happens. And sure enough, soon after that, I started getting requests and introductions to people who were looking for speakers and they were wanting a, a fresh face, you know, sometimes they've rotated through all the TV personalities and whatnot. And so I started going to these auditions and one of them happened to be auditioning for an MC spot, a host spot for a big fashion event in Seattle. And I walked in and this guy immediately recognized me from a couple of events he saw me at because I'm a connector. Yeah. He's like, I know you, you're from the magazine. I was like, yes, I am. So he walked me into these panel of judges. He's like, this is Amy Yamada. She's fabulous. She's with the magazine. And I was like, oh my gosh, she's warming up the judges for me. Right? Hey. It's all about the power of connection and, and yeah. you know, just being kind to people. And so that really um, set the intention for what I had no idea was going to be this great trajectory, but I got to be one of the MCs for this Imagine Fashion Show, and then I worked with this, this guy again, his name's Eduardo Kawam to this day, he's become a great friend, and he launched Metropolitan Fashion Week, which started in Seattle, expanded to LA, and now it's this massive event that's at Warner Brothers Studios, it still is Metropolitan Fashion Week, and while during the most of the year, I'm focused on being a business mentor for coaches and service-based entrepreneurs, but twice a year, I live an entirely different life where I'm in couture gowns, I'm on the red carpet in LA, <laughs> being interviewed by all these media platforms. So as fun. MC. As an MC, yeah. So oh. I still I still MC Metropolitan Fashion Week where I'm one of the co-hosts. You know, they have some other celebrities down there that will co-host with me, or I'll be a host and then they'll do some award presentations. And uh, it's just so fun to think that it all started off with saying, I am, I'm a speaker, I'm an MC. And now it's evolved to speaking engagements where it's actually my own content where I get to be impactful for entrepreneurs and coaches. And um, so, yeah, so just, it just started to set the stage. And evolved. Oprah. 
What about Oprah.com? Oprah, yeah. So um, in college, many years ago, I went to the University of Washington, go Huskies. And uh, I didn't know what I wanted to be, you know, after college. So I was like, what are you going to be? And I was a, you know, speech communications major. And I did a marketing internship my senior year. And uh, so I had to have an answer. But for me, I was like, I'm, I'm going to go to London. I'm going to do this work exchange program. I'm going to travel. I don't really know what I'm going to do. Yeah. Um, I just knew I wanted to have a fun, loving job and just have a great time. <laughs> so my answer was, isn't it obvious? I'm going to be the host of the Amy Yamada show. <laughs> like, yeah. kind of was a joke, right? Yeah. My own talk show. So fast forward to 2010. And suddenly my phone started blowing up. Text messages, phone calls. I'm like, what is going on? And uh, people were letting me know that, Oprah had launched an audition and a competition to win your own talk show on her net network, which at the time was new, the own network, yeah, right? Yeah. So I thought, why not? And within 48 hours, I had lined up a studio, a videographer. Like, I didn't have a budget for any of this stuff, right? I had never really been on camera. So, yeah. um, but because of the power of connection, yeah. I was able to reach out to people that I had helped or knew through the media or knew through friends. And I had all the support around me. And so I just cranked out this audition video. And for the next five to six weeks, it was on because basically you, you do an audition video, you fill out this really lengthy audition um, application, and then you submit it to Oprah.com. And if it gets all accepted, then I ended up on her website with my video. Yes. And then it was up to me to promote voting for my audition. So it was like my own PR, came from, PR campaign for about five to six weeks. Um, and while I don't believe my video was the best audition, I really rocked it out when it came to marketing myself and yeah. promoting it and i pulled out all the stops i wrote my own press releases submitted to radio stations tv stations bloggers all of it got interviewed everywhere got you know it got to be on tv and all these things and got to appear at events because they're like oh my gosh she might be on the own network like as soon as people hear oprah they're like oh my gosh you know it's like the Midas touch <laughs> yes, oprah! i know like oprah what you know i flew down to a casting call in california um, I, I mean, I pull, I, there are so many stories about those five to six weeks on top of my job, right? Yeah. But um, yeah, so I ended up in the top 4% nationally. And um, while I was not selected, I, it opened up so many doors for more speaking opportunities, new connections. Um, and it was really more for me, it was a personal growth opportunity to sh show myself that if I really want to put myself out there on a bigger level and fully go for something, I can do it. And every single morning for those weeks, I would think to myself one thing, and this is something that we can all do is how can I take a step forward towards my vision today? What's one thing I can do today to take a step forward towards my bigger vision? And, and I've even evolved that today is to say, what is one way that I can make a difference today? You know, and I believe that when we all live our lives that way and stand stronger together, then we can all make a more positive difference moving forward versus the negativity that a lot of us seem to be surrounded with when it comes to the media and all of that. Oh, beautiful, Amy. What is yeah, thank you. Make a difference today? I mean, if you want a different life, just ask better questions. So right. really good, better question to ask. Absolutely. The only one who holds us back is ourselves. It's all inside. It's never external. You know, we always want to blame, I'm so busy or I'm overwhelmed or the circumstances or my family or the economy. And the problem with that is that then we give our power away. You know, it's like we give our power to the external circumstance. And I even use words like exhausted or overwhelmed or stressed as an external circumstance because we as human beings invented those words, mm. right? So instead of saying I'm, I'm exhausted or I'm overwhelmed or I'm so stressed, like that's a chance to collect ourselves and say, okay, what I get to do now is to recommit and re, you know, reorganize and prepare myself because all that over overwhelm is and that stress is, it's tied in with not being fully committed and not being fully prepared. And that's something that I learned from uh, Suzanne Evans one time. She was, we were talking about the word overwhelm. She's like, it doesn't exist. It's an illusion. Yeah. And I was like, ooh, I guess yeah. to release this word, <laughs> you know, so yeah. Yeah, fully being, it's, a, it's a, not being fully committed or fully prepared. It's so true. Right. You exactly. gotta have two feet in and you have to take 100% responsibility. That's right. Your thoughts, your feelings, your actions, your attitudes, your results. I love it. So tell us, um, I love everything. I, I'm so on your wavelength with the I am and I changed my, I remember I, in my early years, like it was more around body image and self-esteem and I used the I am affirmations when I was 18, you know, in college. Um, and this is just really a powerful piece. So if you're not already doing it, um, 
you need to be speaking your life into existence by using the powerful words I am. Right. And look at what you did. It's amazing. <laughs> so, so you did this, you know, two weeks out of the year, you're on the red carpet and you're the co-host. And then there were, you talk and you're the queen of connection. So tell us a little bit more about what it means to be the queen of connection and how does connection help female and male entrepreneurs in their business? Yeah, well, the funny thing about the queen of connection is that I did not crown myself this. <laughs> Yeah. I just started being introduced that way and it was really quite humbling. And um, I've always been a connector, you know, ever since I was a little girl, but uh, to bring it to present time to really help anyone who's watching. Um, what I have found as a coach and a service-based entrepreneur who serves these types of people, like-minded, purpose-driven entrepreneurs, is that oftentimes people come to me, and I'm sure they come to you too, Amanda, you and I are very like-minded, I love it, um, to really make a bigger difference with our expertise or our, our skill sets, you know, really make a difference and help others. And second to that, it would be really great to create some financial freedom, some financial peace in our lives to take care of ourselves, our loved ones, and ideally even give back in a bigger way. Mm -hmm. And the missing piece that I see everywhere is the power of deep connection. And um, specifically, especially within the last year or two, I know that a lot of people focus on our online presence, right? So social media sites, our websites, our landing pages, our opt-in pages, mm -hmm. our email lists, and how we send emails to our list. Mm -hmm. And so while I, I practice the power of deep connection, both online and in person, for the sake of today, I know you and I chatted a little bit leading up to this saying, how can we make the biggest difference even in our interview today? And we talked about the power of deep connection through my email success system. Mm -hmm. And so it really all happened when we were at a mastermind and a colleague of ours, you know, you and I are in the same mastermind, which is so beautiful. A colleague of ours said, hey, Amy, I was, she was like, oh, we've, I've just had this full day of training and I still need to write an email to my audience. I've got to finish up this promotional thing. Like she had like three things and it was later at night. I was like, give me your laptop. I'll write your email for you. You know, because I know her really well. I know her audience really well. She's a very well-known weight loss coach. Mm -hmm. And um, I just kind of dropped in and thought about like how she could deeply connect with her audience, hoping to get um, people to be a waiting list of clients for her and her company. Mm -hmm. And that's something that comes very naturally to me. So I just kind of went through my whole process that I go through very easily. And, and I was like, listen to this. You know, well, like, you oh, my Real quick, the, the process you go through about your own body? No, my process I go through is for writing the email. Okay. Sorry, that's for the clarification. Yeah. Yes. So I wrote this email and then I was like, listen to this. So like I was all proud of my, like a little kid, like, look at what I wrote, mom, you know. But anyway, I was like, yeah. listen to this. And I read it to her and she just had these big eyes and she goes, how did you do that? Like, how did you come up with those words? And I mean, it sounds so, I mean, I can see where people will not. Be able, they can't help but want to talk to myself or my team. I'm like, well, yeah, that's the point. You've got to have certain elements in your email if you want to deeply, first of all, get them to open the email, then get them to read the email. And people are skimmers. We, you know, everyone has a short attention span anymore. So there's things that need to pop out in order to grab their, like earn their attention, not just grab it, but earn their attention, welcome them in and have a call to action that shows them that we're here to make a difference for them, mm -hmm. right? So for example, um, a few tips that I'd love to share today. I know we have limited time, but I want to really help any way I can. The first thing we want to think about is the, the subject line, of course, right? There's, if nobody opens your email that you're emailing your list, and this can be even relevant to people who don't have a list yet, just even how you email prospective clients, right? So it can be relevant to everyone. Um, but especially when you have a list, yes, you are writing to typically a, a group of people, whether it's 10 people or 100,000 people, wherever you are on the spectrum of that. Yeah. And so what I do is I think about, if I were to write to one person, what would I say in the subject line based on what I wanted to have happen, right? And so, and to take it a step further, instead of pulling it up a, a draft in my Aweber, MailChimp, Infusionsoft, whatever system everybody uses, I happen to still love Aweber, at some point I'll graduate to Infusionsoft, but I'll, instead of going there first, I will open up an actual, new composition email in my normal email. Like if I were just writing to you, Amanda, right? I would just like, yeah. open it. why do I do that? Because then it. on the subconscious mind, I'm writing to one person. Oh wait, no, but I love this too, because then you're, you're in the medium of email versus, because I write mine on a Mac note or on yeah. a Word, doc Word document, I, right? That's what I used to do too. Yeah, and my assistant, upload, you know, I don't even know how I have infusion software. I don't even know how to do anything. Barely even know how to log in. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, so 
you're telling me you go into the email and you write it as if you're talking to your friend. Gee. Like, yeah, it's, it's such a tiny thing. Right. And we write emails every day, right? So we actually do know how to write connecting emails because we do it all the time. There's and, that writing so hard. Right? So, so it's like, okay. And I'll think about either someone I recently met or I'll think about one of my favorite clients, you know, and, and so I'll, I'll just, you know, I'll think of their name and I'll, I'll actually write the email to that one person. Mm -hmm. Right. So say that I'm just going to pull a name out of the hat because I know sometimes my clients are watching, you have favorites. <laughs> I love yeah. my clients, but yeah. to say it was somebody new that I was talking to and um, most of my clients are women entrepreneurs. I do work with men as well, but say her name was Mary just for the yeah. sake of, it's a beautiful name. So I think about Mary and I think about, you know, what do I want Mary to do? And sometimes if I'm in my, for example, open enrollment for my coaching master's academy, I'll think about how I would love to get on the phone with Mary, who is a purpose-driven entrepreneur who wants to take her business to the next level this year. And while she is here to make a difference and here to build a successful business all around, she doesn't know what steps she needs to take next to boost her business. So think about Mary, open, you know, subject line gosh, it'd be really great to talk to Mary this week because I want to help her any way I can. So I'll just say, hey, are you around this week? <laughs> like the subject line will be casual. Again, it's really about being authentic to you. So I always say if you're looking at a swipe file or if you're looking at other people's emails, it's not about just copying them. Like I really could care less if somebody copies me, honestly, but it's a disservice if it doesn't sound like that, right? So I just think about how do I talk to people? And if you want to know how you talk to people, just go to your own sent items <laughs> because we email people every day. Like, are you someone who's more formal or are you more casual? I tend to be a little bit more casual, you know, unless it's like for a specific event. Mm -hmm. So I'll say, Hey, are you around tomorrow? Or Hey, let's chat this week, Thursday or Friday, question mark, you know, okay. something like that simple. And then the opening, you know, always address them personally. So I'd say, Hey Mary, I like exclamation points. I'm one of those people. Yeah. <laughs> and then the opening line, right? And the thing is, most people, most entrepreneurs will think, I've got to write a marketing email. No, you've got to write a connecting email. You know, you're building a relationship, you're reaching out to them, be in the spirit of generosity and making a difference for them. And so the opening line is very important. And also, we go through trends, right? Marketing goes through trends. So if you're just, if you go, hey, Mary, have you ever thought about the blah, 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 blah? Well, questions, they, you can still use them, but the, the whole trend of using a, a question as the opening line, unless it still sounds personal, like I might say, hey, Mary, are you around tomorrow? Like that's still personally connecting, right? Instead of, have you ever thought about how, you know, something boring? Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah I don't do that. I usually oh. lead with like, hey, I'm excited about this or I'm yeah. pumped up. Like I have the energy, like I'm coming in, you know, and right. then it's like that kind of connection. And then it's like, right. So what are you doing? You know, or like, how is it working for you? Right. Exactly. Exactly. So enthusiasm, if you're like, you and I are both similar high energy people. So I'll say, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to share this with you, you know, yeah. or hey, I've got a quick question for you. And then go into the question, mm -hmm. but just don't be weird. You know, like don't be all marketing -y because in this day and age, people love transparency. They love a personal connection. They love feeling there's no gimmicks or, you know, facades. And one might ask me, I've had entrepreneurs ask me when I've taught them my email success system, they're like, yeah, but Amy, you know, I don't want to be like out of integrity that this isn't really a personal email. And I understand that, right? However, when we are emailing a list and we're making it, creating a personal connection, you are thinking about your audience as a whole. Like that's, that's like a person, right? And when they respond back to you, then when you reply back to them, it will be one-on-one -on -one or it will be someone from your team. So if you're in the spirit of making a difference for them, then it really doesn't matter how you get to that point of personal connection. So I, I personally don't have a problem with it. And most people know if they're on my list, they know that they're on my list and they're like, oh my gosh, I loved how you worded that email because I felt like you really knew me because I yeah. really do know my audience. Again, I know it's not going to be relevant to 100% of everybody and I've had to leave my people pleasing ways in the past. Yeah, but totally. It's all good, you know, if, if it's in the right spirit of things. So, so just, yeah, so opening line, opening, you know, yep. Yeah. So there's the subject line, the opening line, you know, personalizing it, of course. Yeah. And then going into some form of storytelling and right. really thinking about how, you know, how can I use a recent story to make a difference, right? So sometimes people think they have to have some big news to tell a story. You don't have to. I mean, it's great if you just came back from some trip or some mastermind event or a conference or what have you. But I've done, I've started a story where, you know, I was walking my dog this morning and I had this thought, 
a thought can be news. A thought can be yeah. story worthy. A thought can be, I was having this deep thought, you know, cause that's a vulnerable connection. I was thinking about how so many entrepreneurs ask me, how do you attract clients so easily? It's like the number one question people ask me. And so I know that this is a question that is really relevant to you as well, because I know you're wanting 2017 to be your year that you grow your business. Um, so I just wanted to reach out to you because this is something where it doesn't have to be so hard. You know, people think they have to have 20 different strategies going all at once when really it's all about deeply connecting with your audience, both online and in person. So, I'll, I'll, and this is just me making up. I'm just, okay, I love it. Ripping, right? Like, so this could be any kind of uh, story. It could be about how you watched your daughter learn something new. It could be about how you just came back from a road trip and you know, your car broke down and what did you learn from that experience? It could be from a conversation you have with someone or a quote that you read. Gosh, you know, hey Amanda, it's, you know, I, I was just thinking about you when I read this quote and then share the quote and then just say, yeah, when I read this quote, I thought about you because I thought how this is something that is so relevant to women entrepreneurs everywhere that want to give back in a bigger way. So the reason why I want to share this with you, so always make sure that whatever story you share has a point and it doesn't need to be paragraphs long. You know, if it's too lengthy, you lose people. Yeah. That's why it's really great when you start following people that space out their stories and they bold certain statements yeah. like that as well. Yeah. And statements that I bold are the statements that I feel like they can see themselves in the story, right? Mm -hmm. They can see themselves in the story. Um, so I know I want to watch, make sure I'm sensitive to the time or else I'll get all into this, but, but you get the gist of it, right? So yeah. subject line, personalization, opening line, share a brief story, um, a quote, a deep thought that maybe you have, a frequently asked question and do it just in a very organic way mm -hmm. and then share why you're sharing this. You know, my point of sharing this or why is this, you know, this is important because of this so that it makes it relevant to the person you're emailing to. And then what's the transition to solution, right? Mm -hmm. So that being said, I've decided to open up my calendar over the next couple of days because I would love to help you and other entrepreneurs in order to, you know, and then insert the desired result. So again, I know not everyone watching this is a business coach, but you can say, yeah, so I wanted to reach, I, I just opened up my calendar because I would love to help you in this area if this resonates. And, you know, if you're a weight loss coach, right, or a transformation coach and say, you know, I know this is something that, um, you know, you've been wanting to change in your life for a long time and it doesn't happen overnight. But what I can say is when you shift your mindset around it, then you can really set the intention and the tone for the rest of the year. So it's not just a quick fix. So if this resonates with you, I've opened up my calendar the next couple of days and um, my calendar does fill quickly. So if you click here, you know, if you have a scheduling link, if you don't click reply, just click reply and let me know. And I'd love to get you on my calendar. Can't wait to chat with you. Talk to you soon. You know? Yeah just feels natural. There's nothing like salesy or gimmicky or annoying, <laughs> you know? You're just emailing your friend and you're like, hey, I thought of you and you right. can, I know you need this because you told me you did and so right. here's how we can do it. Exactly, yes. exactly. Yep, and, and just keep it real. Keep it so real, be transparent, be you. Like people think, I've got to sound like somebody else. Sometimes when we follow other people at the beginning of our journey or in the first couple of years, we start following someone and we're like, I've got to sound like them, I'm gonna copy their emails. No, it's going to be a disservice to you. Your audience and who you will attract and continue to attract are the people who are attracted to you. It's much easier being you than trying to be someone else. Once I really got that, I was like, oh, oh. easy being me. <laughs> you know? and so, oh, I feel like Sesame, it's really easy being me. It's very, very Sesame Street. And um, really? I know. Yeah, so, so then I just thought, I'm just going to be me. I'm not going to worry about what everybody thinks. And yeah. I know that there'll be people who do not resonate with me and that's okay too. There are going to be people who feel like, why are you sending me this personal email when you don't know me? You know, I get emails like that. Hi, you know, I, I don't even know how you got my email address. I don't buy email addresses. They opt in to get my email. So like, well, you opted in. So I'll always write those people back. I'll never get offended. I'll say, Hey, thank you so much for your feedback. And yes, I, you are on my, you are in my audience. I do email a group of people. Um, and I really think about the common pain points that I know entrepreneurs have, um, but just know I'm here to help you any way I can. Also, if you don't resonate with my messaging, I totally understand, you know, and they're welcome to unsubscribe. There's no attachments, you know, and it's really okay. So when we just let go of all of that angst that we put on ourselves, the pressure, you can use the system time and time again, rinse and repeat. And there's other, you know, I, I do both personal connection emails um, personal connection emails that are in the spirit of generosity where I actually teach something in the email. So it's a little bit of a different format, but it still has 
is personally connecting. And then there's, of course, promotional emails. Even then, I want there to feel like a personal connection, you know, where I invite them to a summit or invite them to a webinar or what have you, you know, or I say, hey, I was just interviewed on this podcast and um, really uh, the host and I shared some really great tips on, on this and this and this, thought you might enjoy it, click here if you want access to it. Mm -hmm. So, so I just think about these three primary ways of emailing people. And it's something I now teach my clients, my colleagues, um, and even share tips on, you know, platforms such as this, so we can help people make a bigger difference and get a waiting list of clients, or at least a waiting list of people that want to talk to you that no matter what, whether or not they become a client, you can make a difference for them. And isn't that what we should all be doing, you know, just helping yeah. others. So yeah, it's pretty much it. And so that is beautiful. So, so what about like for right now, how many times a week do you recommend emailing and do you repurpose your emails and social media? Um, and do you, yeah. And then do you put it like for me, I put it on my blog, I repurpose it, but I also am working on more engagement with my list um, mm -hmm. and sending out value content and not, right. and sometimes I'm in a sales cycle like we all are. And so there's more sales and sometimes it's more generosity. So what is your recommendation for that? Yeah, I would say a minimum of two, two emails a week, um, knowing that not everybody reads all your emails. So for some people that feels like a lot and for some people that feels little and just know that there's big brands out there and you're probably likely on some of those lists where you get an email every single day, right? Like Nordstrom. I love Nordstrom. A lot of us ladies love Nordstrom. Yeah, and while I don't open every email, I would not unsubscribe because it makes me happy every day to see something from Nordstrom, you know? Yeah. The dress of the season. Ooh, I need to click on that, you know? <laughs> so, um, and, and I'm not offended that they email every day. It doesn't feel like overkill. Right. So when you're someone that does at least two a week, and I would even go up as far as four, and I still don't get a ton of unsubscribes. Again, because I take the time to deeply connect with my audience and think about what's going to make a difference for them. And it's really okay if I have a handful of unsubscribes, because while that's happening, I also get people, new people who subscribe to be on my list. So it's, it's no big deal. So two to four feels like a sweet spot to me. Um, and you don't always have to have a call to action. You know, sometimes I'll just do a generosity email where I'm not asking them to do anything I'm sharing and also giving some, some tips on something or a really vulnerable share. I just wrote an email to my list that I got a ton of responses, not for the sake of business. I just shared a really personal story about when I went through a divorce in 2015 and how, while you know, on the outside, it looked like I had all my stuff together on Facebook and I was growing my business and traveling. But at home, I was, you know, I was going through a lot of personal struggle. Um, I shared that because I know a lot of people feel alone as entrepreneurs. And sometimes when we have our own personal things going on, we feel even more alone and that we can't share. And through the power of sharing and vulnerability, that's when we can overcome and it has a ripple effect into every other area of life, right? So when we get things um, solidified internally, in our relationships with the people that we surround ourselves with our external environment, like some people live in a really chaotic space, like when everything is kind of in sync and aligned. It, it affects our productivity in business. Yeah. So what does me going through a divorce have to do with business? Everything. Like I'm much happier. Like I will, oh, my ex and I will always have a place in our hearts for each other. I'm grateful for that. And we're happier having moved on from each other after 14 years together, you know? Um, and so, I share that because I know there's a lot of people who go through their own personal pain and struggle. And I also know that sometimes it's just nice to be able to share what that pain point is because it's the first step towards freedom. So it was really beautiful just do a vulnerable share and to say, hey, if, you know, if you'd like to share with me whatever it is you're going through or talk to a close friend or a trusted you know, um, friend, family member, counselor, just so we can all recognize that everyone goes through pain in life and we never know what battle somebody's fighting unless they choose to share. So it was really cool to just have this beautiful connection with people and they shared with me whatever they were struggling with or yeah, I can relate to that. I went through that too a few years ago. You know, it's just. It's like they're real people on the line and then that increases the engagement and the conversion yep. intimacy between you. And then it's an easier connection to, for someone to feel safe. And then they're going to be like, oh yeah, I totally want to work with you. Like you're the one. And you share this personal story and I can relate yeah. to that part because I did that or I didn't, you know, so yeah. beautiful. Well, Amy, I know you have a gift. Yes. And it's a really juicy gift. So tell us about your gift. Yes. Well, since we decided to chat about uh, my email success system, the first step is having that really great subject line that gets opened. What's the point of writing these beautiful connecting emails if they're not even seen? 
So I decided to put together my top 100 email subject lines that get opened and I'm giving it to you for free. So go ahead and click on that link. It's 100subjectlines.com. I know that Amanda's providing the link as well. 100subjectlines.com and you'll get instant access to this list and you're welcome to totally swipe file, you know, like with subject lines, you can swipe the exact ones, no big deal, or you can make them your own. Um, but these are really, this is a really great cheat sheet to go through, uh, use throughout the year. And then just know that these are subject lines that have worked for me as well as a lot of my clients and colleagues who are purpose-driven entrepreneurs here to make a difference and create financial peace in their lives. So, yeah. Oh, I love it. And that, that link is on the link on this page. So I love that. I actually downloaded it, you know, cause I got the preview. And I was like, I gotta get that. So I did it. Um, really quick. What are, what are you seeing our standard open rates nowadays? Um, in yeah. So that, that percentage actually varies based on the size of your list. So if yeah. you have a massive list, then even if you have like a 1% open rate, that's fantastic. Right. If you have anywhere from 5,000 to 10,000, I mean, even a 15% rate is as a good open rate if you're at 20 to 30 percent you are you're rocking it out <laughs> so um and if it's even higher than that even better you know but um but if you a sweet spot would be between 20 and 30 percent like that's like that's like a really exclusive status that's to be in super. and some people i know you know get 40 to 45 after i do big promotions i tend to be in that 40 to 45 percent rate mm -hmm. um uh but uh but you know usually it hovers around the 25 to 30 percent uh open rate um, what I focus on is um, what happens on my calendar. So if I'm in a sales cycle and open enrollment, I don't worry about how many people are on my list. I don't, I don't worry as much about open rates, although I do recommend looking at your open rates. What I care about is I like to see that waiting list of people that fill up my entire, you know, those sections of my calendar. And that's what's most important. Yeah, outcome focus versus getting emotional. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so that's why I always say don't don't beat yourself up if you don't have a huge list. I didn't start off with a huge list, but when I saw my sales numbers like doubling what my colleagues had when they had, I have this huge list. I have this huge list. I'm like, good for you. I have a multiple six figure coaching business, you know, and it's growing. And you know, it's like, oh, you know, I mean, it's a friendly competition. So I say that with so much love. It's just kind of fun. But uh, but I say it, I say it also because it's not about just having the biggest list. It's about making a big difference for your future clients. You know. Yeah. And you can have both. You can have a big list and multiple. Totally. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's cool that, cause I know our, you know, some, one of our mentors says that like, there's like, okay, if you have 5,000 people, that's a multiple six figure business, but you're saying, Hey, I started with a smaller list and I have a multiple six figure business. Right. And you're not the only one I've interviewed who said they had like 12, 1300 people and they had an event, Laura Wright, and she sold 300 K at her event. So yeah. It is the power of connection and that in, that bond and that intimacy. And I know we're all going to love this gift. So thank you. You're and welcome. I invite you to the after party, Amy. Um, and we're over in, the, in our Be You and Make Bake Facebook group. So come over there and join us. I want to hear from you all. What was your biggest aha from Amy's interview today? I know I certainly love them actually writing the email in the email box. That is genius. So thank you. Like that's like game changer because that, that's the medium. I, yep. Yes, thank you, Amy. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> so awesome. Well, I'll be in touch with you really soon. And everyone, I appreciate you so much for being here and joining us and bringing your energy. And we really hope this impacted your life and made a difference today. So thank you.